Greetings, everyone. Uh, Wednesday night, Unit 1 is winding down. There's tonight, there's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the unit's going to end on Monday. All right, so you still got five days. Still a decent amount of time. Um, the assignments are due Monday night, but be warned, the forum posts are due Friday night. So make sure you go in there and do your introductions. I want to make sure everyone that's in the class uh, is in there and gets their forum post because it's five points. Yeah, five of the 24 unit points is for the forum post. So you want to be make sure you get in on time. And right now you don't have to worry about a size limitation. But in the future, you're going to worry about the size. You want to have at least half a page. It's grad, it's grad school. We're all in the show now. Um, okay, tonight's a real simple one. It's not really something that has to do with the slides or what you're doing. I'm going to quick just start from zero and whip up a program really fast just so you can see it. And I'm not going to put it on Sakai. I'm going to leave it so that you can type it in yourself and get it running and see what goes on. And I figured this go round, coffee, I'm going to do my temperature conversion program because it's, you know, it's useful. It's kind of neat. It, I can do if then. I can do a whole bunch of other stuff. And I'm going to create an error, which I think it would be good for you to see. And then we'll correct that error. And then everyone's going to be happy and everyone's going to be a better programmer for it. All right. So let's go. Like I said, I'm starting from scratch. There is nothing in my hands and nothing up my sleeves. We are starting from zero. I'm going to go file, open. Yeah, doy, I don't want to open. I want to go file, new, and I want to grab a new file. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to give myself some number signs, some octothorps, and I'm going to say author. That would be me. Make my name cap. And then I would say... My temperature program, just to be descriptive and let people know what the deal is. Then you could also put in the date, what you're doing, blah, 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 a whole bunch of things. Some programs are very, very descriptive. You can almost read them like books, the way that they go to explain their logic and explain what they're doing all the way down. You know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, sometimes, though, it gets difficult to follow the logic if the code is really, really spread out because there's a lot of text in the middle. But as you get more sophisticated with your programs, you're going to see the difference. All right, what's the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to print, no caps, print, uh, the temp converter program. So we're going to start things off. By letting everybody know what exactly we're doing. I'm going to come up here and do a backslash N. Uh, you're going to figure out what that is. Actually, I shouldn't do that right now, should I? I should let you wait. Nah, I just I already let the cat out of the bag, so you go figure it out. Um, then what do I want to do? I'm going to do a temp converter program, and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to ask the user what kind of temperature they have. So if they have a Fahrenheit temperature... We'll make it Celsius, and if they have a Celsius temperature, we'll make it Fahrenheit. I think we can do that. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we'll create a variable called temp, not temporary in this case, temperature, and we will take as input a question. What kind of temperature do you have? Question mark, colon, space, boom, boom. Okay, and then we will assume that people will answer with an F or a C. Um, so I'm going to have actually two variables, F and C, and I'm going to make them equal to zeros. See that little line right there? I put F and C, assign 0, comma 0. You can do that in Python. Okay, you can assign different things in a row like that. All right, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to see, well, that might be a little bit confusing because people are going to enter a string, either an F or a C. And actually, we could tell people right here. We can say, and I can use single quotes because I'm using double quotes in the string, so I can use single inside it. And I'll tell the user, hey, give me a C or an F. All right? All right, and that is good, and that is good. All right, so now what am I going to do? I want to see what I have. So I'm going to say if temp is equal to F, then what? Then the person said they have Fahrenheit. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to create the Celsius temperature. So I'll say then C equals, and how do we do that with Fahrenheit? If it's Fahrenheit, what we want to do is say 
C uh, F minus 32. And we want to multiply that by 0.5556, which I think is what you will call it, five nines. All right. So that'll give us the Celsius. And then I have C equals F1. So I have the Celsius temperature. Uh, I can print it later. So I don't think I need to do anything else right there. Then I'll do LF. Um, temp equals C, new colon, and then I want to compute F. So if I compute F, it's the other way around, right? So I take C and I multiply it first by 1.8, which is 9 fifths, and then I add 32. Now this is a good lesson here for uh, precedence of operators because I'm going to do that multiplication before I add the 32 which is what I want to do that's pretty that's why I grouped that up there I didn't say it out loud but implicitly that's what I was doing there I want to make sure I do that calculation before I multiply it by that all right and then just else um, print you need to use a F or a C uh, let me put them in quotes so people know what I'm talking about. Single quotes is what I meant to say. And then I will end that. All right. So if it was F, oh, you know what I'm not doing? All right. I knew I was missing something. Spelling that right. Temp. All right, good. And then here, let me just save that. Copy and then come down here. What am I doing? And say C equals, and then put that right there. Backspace, actually get rid of there. Enter your cell. I think it's an S. We'll find out. Okay, good. So if the user puts in an F, they have a Fahrenheit temperature. So then I detect that. I come down here. I have them give it to me, and then I use it in the calculation. Same thing with the C. If you have a Celsius temperature, you come down here. You ask the user for it, and then you do the calculation to find the Fahrenheit. Excellent. All right, what do I want to do? Now I want to print my results. I think that's I could do it all in one line. I could say print. I'll say F colon comma and I don't want to deal with kookiness as far as the decimal point is concerned I don't want it going like to eight or nine places so instead of formatting it I don't want you guys to get distracted with print formatting because we could literally spend a month on print formatting I'm just gonna change it to an integer and then we're gonna print out the integer uh, C in C Right? All right, why did that do that? Am I missing a... No. I close properly. I do that, I do that, I do that. So why wouldn't it take me to the next line? Something is wrong. I have a string, comma, int f, comma, string, comma, int c. Properly called, I do my... Eh, maybe it's just a glitch. Who knows? We're going to find out. Uh, I'll just call it temp. I'm not going to stick it anywhere, which is another bad thing because temp in computer science usually means a temporary value. If you've ever done a bubble sort, you know what I'm talking about. All right. Let's see. I don't know what I'm doing here. Invalid syntax. It's telling me something tanky. What's the error? Oh, it was just invalid syntax. If temp is on a flow. All right, so the error is going on. Ah, I'm out of balance with these parens. What's taking this so long? Thank you. All right, so am I... So I'm also out of balance with this paren, and is that what was causing my issue down here? Yes! Ain't that the cat's ass? Look at that. All right, save. F. Hey, hey, the temp converter program. What kind of temperature do I have? I have a Fahrenheit temperature, please. 
what is my Fahrenheit temperature? All right, I'm going to say something that I know will give me a version. I'm going to say I have a Fahrenheit temperature of 212, which is the boiling point of water, if we all know. So the Celsius should be 100. Ha-ha! F212 Celsius 100. Let's run it again. I got another test. All right, Celsius or Fahrenheit. I will do Fahrenheit again. And enter my Fahrenheit tape. This time, I'm going to do 32, because I happen to know 32 is a freezing point for water, and the Celsius should be zero. What happens? The suspense is killing me. And I get zero there. Because I converted integer, I'm not getting any craziness with that, as far as that's concerned. So now, something that eh, you might not know off the top of your head, Fahrenheit, uh, let's say the temperature outside is 67 degrees. So Celsius, that's 19. Okay, so if you're not European or you don't have kooky European parents like I did, so you know what Celsius is, um, you can do a conversion like that and figure out what those things are. One thing I didn't do, I'm going to go back and do it, is I'm going to say now I have Celsius temperature. So let's say Celsius is 37. That's hot. Yep, 98 degrees. All right. So that seems to work one more time. I'm crazy that way. Enter your Celsius temperature. Okay, when Celsius is 100, Fahrenheit should be 212. And it is. Okay? So we're in good shape. Look at this. Look at that. Things worked out of the box. Crazy. Now, before, I wanted to show you what if I didn't tell people what to use? Okay? And I had some Boolean algebra here where I was going to take capital or a uppercase letter, okay? And then I run it, F5, and I say capital C, okay? Enter, and it says enter your Fahrenheit temperature. What? I gave it a C, and I come here and I look at my logic. If temperature is equivalent to F or F, do the Fahrenheit. Well, it's not. It's a C. I can, I can even, here, let me just blast through that and get there. I can even look at the temp there. It says capital C, right? And I say here, LF temp equivalent to C or capital C. Okay. So it should do Celsius. What the hell's going on? Let me run this again. All right. Capital C. Run it. It, it did it again. Fahrenheit temp. This is our issue. Ignore those numbers. When you set up your Boolean algebra here, you've got to remember it's treating temp equivalent to F as one side and just the string alone as the other. The string alone is not going to be zero. And zero is how these programs denote false. False is zero. True is one. If you know anything about the C programming language, that's kind of the binary way we do true and false. Okay, so what you have to remember to do is this, okay? You have to do the test explicitly there, all right? If temp is equivalent to C or temp is equivalent to capital C, same up here with the F or the little F. So now if I rerun things and I give it a capital C, I'm back in business. Enter your Celsius temperature. I'm gonna. Let's see, what do I want to put in there? I'll put in 20 and find out that it's 68 degrees. Room temperature is 20 Celsius. All right. So real quick, going to get out of Dodge. Not going to kill you with announcements. I'm just going to tell you that, you know, do that forum post because it's due on Friday. But this is, you know, this is YouTube. Freeze this screen and then you can type all this in for yourself. All right. It's good because you don't know it yet because we haven't talked about Learn Python the hard way. But... Typing in programs is a good way to make mistakes. And when you make mistakes, you have to solve them. Okay? You have to fix them. And in order to fix them, you have to understand what's going on. It's a great way to learn programming languages. Okay? So you want to type these things in for yourself. That way you'll make a boo-boo here and there. And solving those boo-boos is going to teach you how to program that much better. All right? Take my word for it on that one. All right? You look at that. You type it in. You see what's going on going to give you a little bit of feel for what's going on. You introduce what you're doing, you get some initial variables from the user, then you do your calculations based on the data you inputted, and then you print out your results, okay? So this is just a little baby program, real quick 10-minute shot. Figured I'd do it for you. 
So you get another way to feel comfortable using Python and, and you can see some programming stuff in action. All right. All right. I'm going to get out of here. You please keep your eyes on the announcements that I do because Friday the forum post is due. And Monday is the day of the quiz. What you're going to learn about me is I usually give extra time on quizzes. So I'm probably going to open the thing up Friday, I mean Sunday afternoon. All right. And you're going to have a long time to sit with the quiz. It's not really a quiz. It's a day-long open book test. All right. Got to do it yourself. I don't want to get similar answers for different things. But the first one is no great shakes. You're going to see it. You're going to be able to take it. I'll probably open it up at either 6 or 8 o'clock on Sunday. You'll have all day Monday to take it. And then your assignments are due Monday evening. All right. And then Tuesday we meet. I think we have class on the 30th and unit two is going to start that day. So we're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. If you have any questions for me, you can save it for then, or you can put it in the forums tonight. All right. Take a look. Be careful with announcements. I'm going to do announcements like every day or every other day now, because I don't want you, we haven't even met yet and it's a hybrid class. So it's weird. You're just doing this through Sakai and these videos. So I don't want you to feel uncomfortable, unstable. I want you to know what's going on. All right. All right. Good. Then I am getting out of here. I will talk to you very soon. And Hey, we're all going to meet in person next Tuesday, right? All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.